Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from controlpaint.com and today let's talk about adjusting the colors in your image. So let's say I want the sky to look a little darker. Well, to accomplish that, I could use an adjustment layer. Now here I've created a number of selection layers so I can control click on this one I've called sky and here I get a selection for the sky. If you're not familiar with this technique, follow the link at the bottom of the post and I have an older video that talks about it. But anyway, so here I've made a selection around where the sky is, and now I can make a new adjustment layer. So as I said, I want to make the sky darker. Well, that sounds like a job for the levels command. So here I can change some of these sliders and make it darker. Now I have not permanently changed anything. If I hide this adjustment layer here, the sky is left untouched. It means that I can do some other layers, do a little painting, and then later on I can come back and change these settings and nothing has been lost. So this is what's called non-destructive editing. It's very, very powerful. The second part is the mask. So we'll say, for instance, I want this transition here from the dark sky and this very background to be less harsh. Right now it's sort of a harsh cutoff. Well, I am just going to change the way the mask looks. So here, right now I have the adjustment layer itself selected. Instead, I'm going to click on this thumbnail here for the mask, and I'm going to paint with white. And all white is going to do is expand the influence of this adjustment layer. So here I'm using a big airbrush, and I'm just going to kind of fade out this transition. You can think of the adjustment layer as the what, and the mask as the where, as in where is it affecting. Now clearly, I've got a problem. In expanding that transition, I've also gone over top of the car itself. And I don't really want that. Well, because of the way I've set this document up, that's no problem. So I'll click here on the silhouette, and I can pull up that as a selection. Well, now with the thumbnail of the mask selected, I'll paint in black, and I'll pull it right back out. So here, in just controlling the influence of this adjustment layer, I've made this subtle sky and background fade but not affecting the car at all. So let me give you another example. I'll actually hide this adjustment layer. So here we're back to the original image, but I am gonna control click on that mask that I've made. So here I've made a selection of that mask I just painted, but I'm gonna use that selection for a different adjustment layer. And this time I'm gonna do something more colorful. So I'll pick photo filter. And we'll say I wanna do sort of a reddish color. So now I can apply that red color to the area that I previously defined for the darker levels effect. Or if I was so inclined, I could turn both of these on and I could see both simultaneously. So here in this one area, it's getting both darker and redder. But they're both nonlinear, so I can at any time go back and maybe say, oh, I didn't actually want red. Hmm, maybe I'll do green, or I'll do blue, and I can change it and nothing is lost. So when I'm painting, half the time is probably brush and eraser tool, and that's what I generally talk about on control paint. But the other half is taking advantage of more photographic tools. Adjustment layers are a great way to just see what might look interesting. So in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about adjustment layers and focus on my very favorite, which is the gradient map. But until then, if you've never tried these before, I encourage you to just experiment with one of your old paintings and try some different adjustment layers on top. They're very powerful. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.